Hello, Kids Own Kids. How are you guys doing today? You know, growing up in the township, we used to have this thing called being starring. Now, being starring means um, you are the bee's knees of whatever game you're doing. So usually what we do is that we go and watch a movie of some sort. I remember one of my favorite movies was Rambo and um, Rambo in the Jungle or some kind of action-packed movie being boys. And then straight after that, we'd go outside and we'd reenact the, the movie. But everyone used to compete about who's going to be starring. Now, basically, starring is the main character of the movie. So when you guys watch your movies in Disney or Pixar, like Frozen, or Cinderella, or, um, or Toy Story, all these kind of movies that you guys watch, um, you'll see in the big screens, you know who the main characters are, right? That was what we used to call starring, all right? Because in the movies, it would be like starring Bruce Lee. And so <laughs> that's who we would say we were. And today, I want us to look into this great book here, the Bible. And in the Bible, there is a study or a main character. Do you guys know who the main character is in the Bible? Now, mind you, in the Bible, there are actually, the Bible actually is a library. It's not so much one book as it is many books. It's a library. There are 66 books in one book. And yes, in your movies, Disney World, and all these things that you guys watch these days, there are other characters in the movie, correct? So there's not just one main character. There are other characters in the movie. So Finding Nemo, there's Dorothy, and there's the dad, and uh, there's all sorts of characters within the movie. But Nemo is the main character. And the same is for the Bible. There are many characters in the Bible. There's Moses, there's Joseph, there's Isaac, there's Abraham. There's all these characters. But there is one main character in the Bible. And he is in the Bible from beginning to the end. See, after Moses dies, Moses dies. His his, his role in the, in the books, the characters, is then, is then done. But this particular person, from the beginning, right through to the end, he is still the main character. Everything turns to him. Do you know who I am talking about? That's correct. It's Jesus Christ himself. And I'll be able to prove it. If we go to Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapters 61, verses 1 and 2, it reads like this. The spirit of the servant Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim freedom to, for the captives, those are prisoners, and to release from darkness for the prisoners. It goes on to say, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance for our God, to comfort all those who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion and bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning. And it goes on and on and on. Now, here's the interesting part. Isaiah is writing this down because he's a prophet, meaning that he can hear what God is saying to him and he's writing it down in the scroll for the people of Israel. He is God's messenger. Because that's what a prophet is. Isaiah is one of God's messengers, and God uses Isaiah to speak to 
his people. Now, watch what happens years later. Now, this is in the Old Testament. This is years and years and years and years later. Jesus is now reading this scroll, Isaiah's words. He's taking the scroll or the book of Isaiah and he's reading it out in the synagogue or in the church. And this is what Jesus reads on that day. So this is coming from, you know, the, the reading is going to come from Luke chapter 4, verses 16 to 22. All right? So this is years later. Isaiah has written this on the scroll, uh, and he wrote those words we just read now. Now, years later, Jesus comes, and he's up in the synagogue, or what we call the church, uh, the Jewish calls it synagogue. It's neither here nor there, but he's at the church and he's reading out of Isaiah's scroll, okay? Now remember, Isaiah is a prophet and that is a messenger for God. So Jesus is now reading from his scroll that he wrote years ago. And it reads like this, okay? Uh, Luke 4, chapter 60, I mean verse 16. Now listen carefully, boys and girls. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Doesn't that sound very similar to what we just read in Isaiah 61? Well, this is exactly what's happening. Jesus is reading that scroll and that's where he is. So then he does this. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fixed, were fastened on him. And he began saying to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled. So there it is, boys and girls. Jesus in the synagogue, reading the scroll of Isaiah. And then when he's finished reading the scroll of Isaiah, he said, these words that Isaiah have writ has written down, they are speaking of me. I am that person who's coming to set the captive free, to heal the blind, to, um, to set the captive free, to heal the blind, and here for the poor. So Jesus is saying that this writing from Isaiah is about me. I'm the main character. I'm the person who has come to do that. And then we go on to see it within Jesus' life. Jesus heals a demon-possessed man. Jesus feeds the 5,000. Jesus does all these things that the prophets of the past said that he would do. And so the Bible really is telling us about Jesus and is pointing everything to Jesus. So the Old Testament points us to Jesus and the New Testament shows us Jesus coming to the fulfillment of God. Okay boys and girls, today's message is nice and short and sweet. Just remember that in this great book, there are 66 books, and all 66 books, in some way or another, point to Jesus. Because this is what God's plan was, was for us to see Jesus in his word. Okay, so in conclusion, God has a story. This is his story. And his story is all about Jesus Christ and how Jesus comes to earth to reunite us with God. Okay, let us pray, boys and girls. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you had a plan for us since the beginning. Thank you, Lord, that we can find Jesus and all his teachings and your love in these scriptures and in the Bible. Continue, Lord, to open our eyes so that we can know you better and know you more. 
every time we go into our mind. Reveal Jesus to us every time we encounter the Bible and help us, Lord, to fall in love with the reading scripture. And this we pray in your precious name. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Nice and short and sweet. We'll see you again next week. Bye.